Hi, today we're going to go over basic plane design. So uh, we're going to go over just the basic idea of how to build a plane, a simple plane. What are the things you need to look for? How do you get the thing to fly the way you want it to fly? And then a little bit on how to fly it as well. So for today, what we're going to be doing for the first time, going into the space plane hangar. And I want to build something really simple not something that's going to be too outlandish just something to sort of like a starter sort of a plane the kind of plane you might build early in a career to go and do those you know observing carbon at different altitudes and all that kind of stuff so we're going to start off with a mark one cockpit this is the single crew cockpit but uh because we don't want to make this our only we don't we, we want to be able to carry a variety of kerbals so why don't we let's see I think it's under here yes we'll put on this mark one crew cabin so now this steps up our crew up to uh, three kerbals and of course we're gonna need some fuel so mark one fuel tank that's the one you want the one that only contains liquid fuel we don't need any oxidizer like we need with rockets because we're going to be burning the oxygen in the air. And then, of course, we're going to need an engine and a good standby engine is this one, the J33 Weasley turbofan engine. Nice little engine. Now, uh, well, we're going to need a little bit more than that, aren't we? Uh, these engines require air. They require to burn the oxygen in their air, so we need to provide an air intake. I believe they are under here, under aer aerodynamics. There's all kinds of different intakes, but um, I'm going to go with a single one of these radial intakes like this. We'll just stick this on the top here for now. There we go. So that will be providing the air and the oxygen for us to be able to burn our fuel. Now, of course, this isn't a plane yet without some wings. So let's provide some wings. Uh, and again, we're going to keep her simple. Early on in your careers, you will unlock some nice swept wings, simple swept wings. Where are they? Simple swept wing. Oh, that's the one I'm looking for, simple swept wings. I'm going to stick them on here in general on the side. We're obviously going to want to put two of them. There we go, like that. Okay, now these wings require control surfaces. So we have a variety of elevons here and the most basic one is this one. So that's the one I'm gonna stick on here. And again, we're gonna keep the two times symmetry. So we get one on each side and I always, up oh, there it is. Stick that about there. Good, good, good. This guy's also going to need a tail and uh, now, why don't we go with this? This this provides sort of a standard tail here, standard canard. We're going to use that as our tail. I'm just so that, that one's a wing. There's lots of different options. I'm going to go with that. We'll use this guy, standard canard for a tail. It's not going to be really used as a canard. Canards are control surfaces that go up here at the front like this. But I'm going to use it back here. Single symmetry. Snap that around here. Notice I had to move my air intake. I could kind of. Ah, you know what? I, can, I don't mind that. That looks good. Okay, we'll leave it like that. Okay, so that's our tail. Big. And uh, I'm also going to need to put I, um, some either some elevators at the back or some canards at the front. Now I could do I could use the exact same control surface again. Where did I have them? There they are. The standard canard here. I can put two of them up at the front. I'm going to put two at the back. I'm going to go with this. You know what? I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to grab, I think it's this one. This one's the small. Yes, these little guys. Just to do something a little different. So these are, uh, what are they? Structural wing type D. I could have gone with the canards that I was using, but uh, this will work just fine. These guys, though, don't have control surfaces, so that's the re reason I want to do it. I wanted to put on another control surface just to show you the different ones. This one, Elvon number four, they're smaller control surfaces. Again, play around with the rotation until I get the rotation the way I want. Ah, there we go. Perfect, like that. Okay, I'm going to take this tail backwards just a little bit more. Okay. I think I moved it backwards. All right, so uh, what else we need? We need landing gear, landing gear, landing gear, landing gear. 
and we're going to use these the simpler ones here. Uh, I guess these are the simplest ones, but no, I'm going to go with the retractable landing gear. We're going to put one up here at the front, right about there. Okay, and uh, this one's going to be doing our steering for us. So we've got to make sure that the steering is enabled. And as well, I don't want it braking at 100% force. I'm going to actually turn this down uh, quite a ways because if, if it brakes too hard at the front, you can kind of go an ass over tea kettle kind of thing, you know, do a nose dive on the runway. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to turn the brakes down on that and another set of small landing gear, two times symmetry. These can go in a variety of different places. I kind of like them out here on the wings. Um, and definitely eventually ah, there we go uh, definitely play around with your your landing gear location you want to get I always like to make kind of a tricycle kind of design you can put depending upon your plane you can put two at the back like I have here one at the front or two at the front and one at the back if these wings were more forward a whole lot of different things okay so this is starting to look at least a bit like a plane but um, well I suspect it might not fly too well. And what I want to do is I need to take a look at where the center of mass is. So I click the button there, there's the center of mass there. And I also want to take a look at the center of lift. Okay, so center of mass. The center of lift here is quite a ways behind the center of mass. This is going to make my craft fairly nose heavy, which means it'll want to pitch down into the ground. Not necessarily, you know, that's, you kind of actually do want the lift a little bit behind the mass, but not this far behind. Now, just to show you, if I went, let's grab the wings and move these up this way. This way, if I move the wings up this much forward with the lift in front, this would create a plane that would actually want to lift up. And this is actually even a worse situation. You would actually be aerodynamically unstable. The plane would actually want to flip around and go backwards and upside down all the time. The ideal place is to get it... So it's just a little bit behind the center of mass like that. Now don't forget, as we drain our fuel, that center of mass is going to move forward. So do make sure, depending on where you have your fuel tanks, that the center of mass never ends up drifting behind the center of lift. But this sort of configuration here is probably a good one. Now let's do a few more things to clean it up. Number one, I don't like the way these wings are kind of over the window. So I'm going to use this move tool here. I'm gonna grab this it on fine control and we're going to just translate these down just a little bit just so that they're under those and I'm noticing here I'm getting a bit of a gap so I want to move them inwards a little bit clear up that gap there we go that looks better uh, I am covering up not ideal I am covering up my hatch here so my kerbal won't be able to cut in or out but I want to talk about aerodynamics so frankly I don't care <laughs> So this is starting to look all right again. Let's take a look at the center of mass, center of lift. That looks good. We have air, we have fuel. Looks good. The next thing we want to do, the next thing we want to do is control these control surfaces. Okay, so let's talk about control surfaces. We have three basic control surfaces. We have these guys on the wings. We have our tail. And we have these guys here on our elevators at the back. And again, instead of building elevators, if you wanted to, I could have these wings further back, put these at the front, and then they'd be canards and you can build planes that way. But I don't know, I felt like doing it this way today. So let's start with these guys. So if we right click on them, you can see here we have some pitch, yaw, and roll controls. For the wings, you want these to control roll only. So we're going to deactivate the yaw, deactivate the pitch. Um, roll is turning motion around the central axes of your vehicle. So if you can imagine, let's put the center of mass back in here to give us an idea of what we're talking about. Imagine the plane, if you tied a string to this, like if this were a model, you tied a string to that and let it hang, it would actually be balanced on that center of mass. If I wanted the plane to roll, in other words, spin around this way or spin around this way around the central axis, around the fuselage, just think about where you would want to apply a force. Where would you want to sort of push with your finger to get that happen? And of course, what you want to do is you would want to push at the wingtips towards here, right? So the wings are a good control surface to control rolls. That's why I disabled yaw 
pitch. And the further out these are along the wind pips, the more torque you're going to get and the more force you're going to get into your roll. And that could be either a good thing or a bad thing. If your plane starts to get too twitchy when you're trying to roll, try moving these things more inwards towards the fuselage. If you're finding you're not getting enough roll, move them back outwards. The other thing you can control as well is this control authority. If you find things are too twitchy, you can turn that control authority down. If you find that you need more, you can turn that control authority up. And I'll leave it where it was, which was about 100. Excellent. Okay, on to the next control surface. Let's take a look at the tail. Tail's going to apply a force horizontal to the plane. And that's going to affect the yaw. It's turning left and right. So that is what I want it to control. So we're going to disable the roll. We're going to disable the pitch. Again, same idea. If you find it's too twitchy, you can adjust the uh, authority limiter. You could also try moving it forward and back. The further back it is, the more yaw control you have. The further forward it is, the less yaw control you have. And then finally, taking a look at these guys. These guys here, oops, this off to the side. You want to control pitch. Pitch is movement up and down, going up or going down. Uh, again, imagine if this thing was hanging from its center of mass. If you apply the force here, like if you push down on this particular control surface, you would be tilting the plane up. Similarly, if you pushed up on this control surface, you would be doing it down. So if you want to control pitch, what you want are control surfaces that are towards the back of the plane or towards the front of the plane. I have mine towards the back, but you can just as easily put them up towards the front. So these guys are for pitch, so we'll disable yaw and roll. All right, we're getting very, very close to actually giving this thing our first test fly. Actually, I just realized one last thing I want to do is take a look at these wheels here. Um, I don't want them to steer, so I'm going to disable the steering. I want all the steering to happen on that guy. Brakes, though, I definitely do want them to brake. And then finally, what I want to do is see how this thing will sit on the runway. So we're going to grab it by our root part, the fuselage. And we're going to move it down towards the floor here. And what I'm looking for are what wheels touch first. Notice that, whoops, that forward landing gear is touching the ground before these landing gears are. So what that means is, is when this is sitting flat on the runway, um, it's going to be pitching up. And that is what you want. Having it pitched up just a little bit will help it take off on the runway. Now, if you have it pitching up too much, which frankly, I might have it pitching up too much because I'm looking at this now, this is quite a bit lower. If you have it pitching up too much, what you will find is that uh, you will have trouble landing. So I'm actually, I do think this is pitched a little too far up. So I'm gonna use my move tool again. Take a look at this landing gear here. I'm going to just tuck it a little bit further into the fuselage like that. Maybe even a little bit more forward too. There we go. And maybe take these guys and move them down just a little bit. Okay, let's see how that sits. Okay, still have that front wheel touching first, but it's not as extreme as it was before. All right, uh, one last thing you want to look at. I was just thinking about this, looking at it from this angle. Um, you want to have these back wheels a little bit behind your center of mass. When the plane t pitches up on the runway to take off, it's going to pivot on these back wheels. If the center of mass is too far forward compared to where these wheels are, you're going to have trouble pitching up and off of the runway. These guys are actually really close. I'm actually worried if I put this down that it might actually be a little bit back heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab those. Here you I'm going to move them a little bit further. Eventually, I will have this rotated the way I want. Close. Bad. 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 Good. <laughs> I'm going to move them a little bit further this way. Now I'll take a look at the center of mass again. I think this is a little better. I think they're a little further back. 
All right, I think I'm ready to give this a go. So let's see how this flies. Who's our pilot going to be? Pilots, Jebediah. Jebediah, you've flown too much. Valentina, get in there. All right. We'll save this. Give it a name. Uh, it is Planey. All right, Planey. Let's go. I didn't save it. Oh, well. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay, there it is. Put on the brakes because it's rolling backwards. It's sitting nicely on the runway. I do like that. Okay, we are going to change our view to chase mode. For planes, I like to be in chase mode. Put our camera in here behind. We're going to turn on our SAS for control on the reaction wheels that are in the cockpit. That'll help us with attitude control a little bit. We'll throttle up all the way, and then we'll hit the space bar to engage our, well, maybe take the brakes off first, then engage the space bar. We'll start accelerating down the runway. Now, you want to start to pitch up, and you want to, whoa, you want to sort of notice when do we start to lift off, and I lifted off at just under, just under 60 meters per second. So 60 meters per second is about the stall speed of this plane. Throttle down even a little bit more. So that means if I get below 60 meters per second, this plane's going to kind of want to drop out of the sky. And that's very useful to keep in mind, especially when you're coming in for your landing. Okay, let's try our different control surfaces. So roll. There we are. It's a little bit, a little bit jumpy. So let's take this. Turn down the this down to 50. Let's try it. Oh, 48. That's close enough. Let's try that. That's a little less jumpy. I like that a little better. Alternatively, again, I could move them towards the fuselage, but can't do that, obviously, right now. Uh, let's see. Try number two. Yaw. 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 Yaw control. All right. Might want to calm you down a little bit, too. <laughs> okay. And finally, pitch control these guys. Pitch control. Probably again. I want to turn. I'm going to put you. I'm going to put them all at 50. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, excellent. All right, let's uh, let's throttle up, pitch up, and see how high we can get with this thing. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to take a look at the engine, and I'm going to take a look at my air intake because I want to point out a couple of things. So. Right here, it's telling me how many units of air are flowing into my air intake. And you can see here that the number is going down. So we're taking in less and less air. And that's, of course, because the air is getting thinner and thinner as we gain altitude. But the thing I want to draw attention to here is noticing that the thrust is also dropping off. The less air that's coming through that engine, the less mass is being pushed out back and the less thrust you get and you get to the point now you can start to see it my speed is actually going down so I'm going to pitch down a little bit there we go and you'll find that um, there's only a certain altitude you're going to be able to get to and honest with a plane like this one that altitude's probably in around maybe 10 11 kilometers kind of maximum altitude the other thing you want to do too is because the thinner the air is, the less thrust you get, but also the thinner the air is, the less drag is on your plane. So there is actually kind of a sweet altitude that's going to vary from plane to plane. And if you're going to take your plane on a bit of a distance, you're going to want to find out where that kind of sweet spot is, where your cruising altitude is going to be. Too low, you get too much drag on the plane potentially even heating problems and stuff like that. Too high, you get too little thrust on the engine. So sort of try and find that kind of sweet spot in there that can give you maximum speed. The other thing you want to take a look at all the time with planes too is this little dial up here, which is giving you your rate of climb. I'm climbing at a little over 10 meters per second. What I like to do to sort of adjust that finally is just push F that briefly turns the SAFs off. Oh, and that tells me as well, my center of my plane is very, very much balanced. Because <laughs> when I turn off the reaction wheels, notice that it doesn't drop. If you have the center of mass a little bit more forward, it actually has a tendency to drop if you turn the reaction wheels off. That's pretty good. Okay, so enough for flying in a straight line. Let's uh, 
turn our cells around and head back to the Space Center. I like to turn around this way. So I'm right upside down, pitch forward. Get a little bit of thrust. Don't want to give too much thrust because I'm going to be obviously picking up speed just thanks to gravity. Turn around that way. All right, let's start heading back. On this dive. We don't need these windows anymore. I've talked about that. And let's practice ourselves a landing. So again, we're coming in for a landing. Keep in mind that sort of stall speed. That that um, uh, was about 60 meters, a little less than 60 meters per second for this plane. See, we're starting to get some uh, aerodynamic effects here as we're closing in around the speed of sound. That's okay. Fine. Um, was it? Oh yeah, I was talking about stall speed. 60 meters per second, a little less than 60 meters per second is the stall speed. So as I come into the runway, I want to be above that, obviously, because I don't want to drop down onto the runway. But I don't want to be too much above that. You want to try and not come into the runway faster than you really, really need to. Let's slow ourselves down. We're definitely well over the speed of sound here now. Um, you don't want to come into the runway too fast. So think about just being a little bit above that that uh, that stall speed. Another nice thing that's on some of the engines, including this Weasley engine, is a reverse thrust mode. That's really handy for slowing yourself down. In fact, I'm coming in so quick here, what I might just try doing is turn the engine off, engaging the reverse thrust mode. See this cowling slips back? Now throttling up, and this is actually slowing me down, which probably I want to do anyway. So that reverse thrust mode is, is nice. It's nice too to tag, toggle that to an action group. For planes, I like to actually toggle it to the RCS group because you, unless you're going to put your plane into space, you'll rarely want to use RCS with it. So, all right, so we're going to line ourselves up here with the runway, slowing ourselves down. Let's throw ourselves down even further. Here. Okay. Again, remember, I don't want to get really too much below 60 meters per second doing this. So now I'm still in reverse mode too, so keep an eye on that. You can see my shadow down here that helps you judge the altitude. Okay, let's turn that right off. Oh, ah, we're coming in here nice now. Okay, line ourselves up with the runway a little bit. Just before we touch the bottom here, we're gonna just pitch up. Oh, we're just, oh my gosh, this is like, oh, a little bouncy. Wow, wow, very bouncy. Okay, there we go. And we can apply our brakes. We can actually give a little bit of reverse thrust if we wanted to as well. In fact, we don't need it, so we'll turn it off forward thrust. There we go. That's it. We are down. So I hope you found this video helpful. What I'm going to do here while I'm talking about that, throttle up again. We'll see if we can do some something a little more daring. We'll fly around the KSC. I will say right off the bat, I am not the most brilliant of pilots. So be careful. Okay, let's fly around here a little bit. Actually, one thing, if you're going to fly around like I'm doing here, keeping an eye on your nav ball is a really good idea, particularly if that prograde vector falls below the horizon. That means you're going down. You won't want that to happen unless you know that there's enough ground there below you. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful.
Oh. Sorry, Val. <laughs>